TJ, welcome to Indianapolis. As you explored your options in free agency, now going into your seventh season in the NFL, what was most appealing about Indianapolis to you? And also introduce us to who you have there with you for the interview. Yeah, we, we have our my son, Elijah. He's two. Um, he's excited. He does not want to leave daddy's side. So he gets as much as his company as he possibly can. And I'm shaping him to be a young businessman at an early age. So uh, he'll be tuning in onto, onto the call with us. Uh, but, you know, the biggest thing that, that I've learned is uh, that the Colts organization from top down has been a, a phenomenal organization, organization to be in. And it was very appealing to me to come to a right fit in this position of my transition Hi. going into the seventh year. So when I, when I laid down and understood that, you know, they have a phenomenal group defensively. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. One of my former players that I played with in Oakland, mm -hmm. uh, Danico Altry, he uh, loves it there. So it's a, it's a sense where I've had some familiarity where I've had former players and current players there, played there, loved it. And I think it's a great fit for me. In your seasons in Oakland and in Cleveland, you've really been able to flex your versatility on the defensive side of the ball. How much dimension do you bring to this very young Colts secondary? Yeah, I think the ability to play inside and outside, it definitely allows me to be versatile in the sense where, you know, depending on the game or depending on the receiver, that we can really take advantage of either playing inside or outside. But that also brings a challenge because we have to continue to hone our craft every day on, on, on the practice field. And it's something that I love doing. So I'll be grabbing, you know, JG, one of the coaches and pulling him to the side and understanding that, look, I need to work on these things today uh, so that we can be successful going into the game. And um, having supportive coaching staffs like that is the real reason that I've been able to go into my seventh year. So excited to, to get started. You have Kenny Moore here in the Colts organization in that defensive backs room. Then you have Xavier Rhodes coming in along with you. What's your leadership leadership style and how do you anticipate that all complementing each other in this locker room? I think one of the biggest things that I've seen is the defense that they have is, is phenomenal. You know, they, you know, I, I continue to hear that they're young, but you know, young, talented de defensive uh, perspectives and, 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 and options definitely give you the ability to do a lot of flexibility things that you want on the on the defensive standpoint. So being able to watch film and understand that they have that capability and they've done it uh, at a very high level these past few seasons um, definitely excites me because now I can just add a little flavor in, in what I bring to the game and in, in, in the leadership capability of whether that's, you know, working out differently, whether that's watching film, whether that's um, you know, staying out after uh, practice and, and grabbing the guys for a few things that we can work on and, and bringing that camaraderie of, you know, bringing a, a, a style of play that we would want and need uh, to take it to the distance. And so as much help as possible, I would love to, to get out there, get on the field and, and, and kind of give my experience and allow myself to lead from that standpoint uh, and give those you know, those players a, a role model to look up to or just someone to learn something from that can help transition them into the next part of their careers. You spent some time here in Indy during training camp. There were those joint practices last season between Cleveland and Indianapolis and then the preseason game. What do you remember about that experience? I remember, of course, those practices there at Grand Park in Westfield, super physical between the Browns and the Colts, very competitive atmosphere. Yeah, it's something that um, that competitive nature is is really what they bring to the table. And, you know, we play in a competitive business, but I think that the level of competitiveness that you see from coaches and just the organization itself breeds diamonds in the sense where it breeds perspectives of great players. So um, being able to, to experience that last year in that training camp and just seeing how they do training camp. It's phenomenal, man. The, the fans are there. They really give an opportunity for the fans to kind of join in and give that energy. And it, that, that ignites practice and that ignites the sense that I want to compete even more because there's, there's fans out here that uh, want to see that, right? So it was definitely a great experience in seeing how they do it. And um, I'm looking forward to being in that same position this year. You faced some adversity early on in your football career, actually battling a heart issue. How did that give you perspective and just describe that journey for you as a young athlete with, with such high aspirations in terms of what you wanted to accomplish in football and having to overcome that? Yeah. Um, 
You know, I think adversity is, is something that we all battle with in life. And I think that one of the biggest things is how you can showcase the ability to achieve and accomplish or even move through that adversity. And I think that a, a host of great family members, close friends, close coaches have given me that ability to really um, take advantage of the opportunities that I did have and, and make the most out of them. And I think from that standpoint, it's the real reason why I love giving back to the community. And it's the real reason why I have started the foundation, the TJ Carey Foundation, to help battle and, and give support and aspirations to kids and families who battle that same adversity uh, with heart disease. And I'm very passionate about it. I love doing it. And I love being able to uh, give a little bit of part of my wisdom and my experience to um, families and kids and youth and teens so that they can and realize that, man, he went through the same thing that I went through and he's in the position that he wants to be. So there's no different circumstance that Though that I'm going through this, I can still get through it and accomplish and achieve my dream. And that's something I'm passionate about and I love it. For those who are unfamiliar with your story, can you describe what you went through as a teenager that caused you to lose such significant time early on in your football career? Yeah, so at the age of 15, going on 16 years old, I was diagnosed with a, a abnormal right bank heart, um, right abrant. Uh, coronary artery and um, what happened is it caused me to black out to faint in my early years of high school and um, at that time we were so unfamiliar at this process that um, it, it really scared our family and um, I'm a sibling of I have four other siblings we're all boys we've all been bred and in, in, in love playing football so I've I've always been able to watch my three older brothers play football and I was the guy who was I was the boy who was the water boy and I was the boy who was the ball boy so those things were things that I wanted to do and and and, and I I thought to think that man I'm going to be there one day too and, and when my opportunity and my chance happened I was presented with this obstacle right this adversity of not knowing what was going on, but wanting to still progress. And I had two options. You know, one option was, you know, you don't have surgery and you, and you don't achieve those dreams, right? You don't get to go out there and play football because uh, the procedure that you would need uh, would take that out. Or you can get the procedure and you can take your chances. But, you know, who knows and who's going to take a chance on a kid that at that age, at that young of age, has had open heart surgery to say that they're healthy enough to continue to play the game. And so, uh, you know, we leaned heavily on our faith in God and, and um, came out through with a lot of support and help from my family and a lot of close friends. And we're here today and it's exciting. And it's a story that I love telling because I want to try and give as much inspiration and support to whoever is battling that, that same um, obstacle that I had to battle and um, love, love to help and, and give advice and give encouragement and give confidence that all dreams can still be accomplished though you've went through something like that. We are so grateful for you taking time to talk with us. Excited to get you here to Indianapolis and be part of the Horseshoe. Uh, of course, Elijah too, welcome to join us anytime, <laughs> anytime he wants to weigh in and provide that analysis and his perspective. Thank you. Thanks for having me on and I'm excited to join.